let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making the Fortuna backpack by Isiso. Isiso? I should have verified before I started the video. I'm sorry. Thank you, T, for um, reaching out about this pattern so that I could make one and make a video for it. Epic backpack seriously like the perfect back to school backpack it was fairly quick to make it has tons of pocket options literally every surface of this backpack has a pocket um and it didn't take that long little chunks for sure so it's got two slip pockets here the way these come together is really fun it's just two pieces that you attach and there you go it does have side pockets here i added this overlay it is explained in the pattern and then it has a grab handle a zippered pocket back here and then I added these padded straps we added some vinyl accents to the end of our webbing uh, and these locking slide adjusters so I did change up the backpack straps but other than that I pretty much followed the pattern as far as interfacing goes I have foam in the front and back panel and I have so fuse plus in the top of the zippered gusset and foam in the bottom of the gusset so that it's still kind of squishy but the top zipper remains very shapely. On the inside I added a um, cargo slip pocket and then I added a zipper pocket with a little overlay and I show you how I do that. Um, other than that this is a pretty boisterous beginner friendly bag and I hope you check it out enjoy but do not forget to subscribe if you're gonna watch this video and you're not gonna subscribe my cat and I will judge you all right we are gonna go over all of the pieces that we should have cut as well as some extras that I've cut out as well um, the cutting chart was a little confusing to me but that's because there are like three different cutting charts. So depending on what works best for your brain, there are options available, which I thought was really cool actually. Um, so as usual, what I like to do is um, take some packing tape to cover the cutting chart um, and then just use an Expo marker and mark off as I have everything cut. And you could even do that again with a different Expo marker as you're doing this step, just to like triple check that you've got everything cut. Um, I didn't find that this backpack had too many pieces, which I thought was great. And it also includes a way to make it without being a bound seam, but I'm gonna do binding because it's just quicker. So let's get organized here. I have my two lining pieces. I have cut out a zippered pocket lining and I'm also using a zipper pocket overlay piece wherever that went to good golly Miss Molly where'd it go it was off in its own little world had a separate pile okay so I am using this zipper pocket overlay this is from Jolie Lee Creations so I've cut out zippered pocket pieces to match. And then I've also cut out an eight, no, nine inch by 16 inch one piece of waterproof canvas so that I can create cargo slip pockets for the inside. So there will be a cargo slip pocket as well as a zippered pocket for the lining of the backpack. So that is the lining. Now I'm gonna work on stacking the gusset into this pile. So I have my exterior gusset with my foam already fused to the fabric. And then I have my lining piece of waterproof canvas. I've got my top zipper gusset piece that I actually fused with SoFuse Plus. I didn't want the foam to make it too puffy. I wanted it to have a little bit more shape. Um, and then I also have some pieces of my accent vinyl that I'm gonna use to add a little overlay onto it because I cut it wrong and didn't wanna waste those pieces. So there is my gusset. The front of the backpack is one piece of vinyl 
and um, foam. And then there are these two front slip pockets that should be mirrored, mirror images of each other. You should have your exterior and your lining. So I'm just gonna stack those. Um, if you have like a separate place to keep your pattern pieces, that might help you stay organized instead of like a box like this so that you know, okay, I'm gonna work on this step now. Okay, once I get that done, I'll grab my pieces for this step, that kind of thing. Um, so that is my, these are my gusset lining pieces for the top. So like I said, I'm making little stacks. Gusset there, lining there, front here. These are my straps. These are the side pocket and lining side pocket pieces. So that can go in my gusset pile because I'm gonna be using those around the gusset. So now we have our back left. And so when you break it down into these little chunks, it's so much less overwhelming. Um, I really am excited about the way the back is created. It's a super easy way of adding a zippered pocket. Um, you should have these zipper tabs that will attach to a zipper. You should have your lining pieces, which attach to the back top piece and the back bottom piece. So I've got one back top piece and then one back bottom piece. So I just think that is really fun. I love that every side of this backpack has a pocket or storage option. Um, so I did cut out my ring connectors, but I'm not going to use this. I decided to um, use the methods from the back of the Mercury backpack from Care Threads. So I'm adding webbing to these triangle connectors. So I'll be sewing around the long or the shorter sides, flipping it through, top stitching, and then adding that into the seam. And then I'm using locking slide adjusters with webbing. So I'll be sewing these onto padded backpack straps, the same that are in that pattern as well. So I'll probably be fast forwarding through the padded straps because that is part of another pattern. Um, but they're super easy. I highly recommend getting that pattern as well because um, it's just really cool. And then we have a back strap, which is double sided. So there's a larger print and then a smaller non-print, or you could flip that around if you wanted, whatever. Um, and then you have your back, ac back accent overlay and then your foam. And that's it. <laughs> Four minutes later. <laughs> Um, the only hardware that I'll be using is zipper tape, a couple zipper pulls, and these locking sliders. So pretty minimal. You could even make this without locking sliders if you're like, it's 3 a.m., I really want to make this bag. I have nothing. You could still do it. I just wanted to say thank you again to T for allowing me to film this backpack, for reaching out to me to film this video. I'm super excited to get to sewing it. All right, I am gonna get started with the front of the bag. I'm gonna grab a nameplate while I'm here so that I don't forget. Um, and we're gonna start with the front pockets. We are gonna be sewing on the shortest edge and then that top slanted edge. I'm gonna use like, I think it's a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So we're leaving the curved side open. Does that feel good to sew? And not have someone above my head. I'm so sorry if you enjoy that view. I just can't do it right now. So I am trimming away the seam allowance just at that curve, not the curve, but the um, point. So 
so that'll help make everything lay a little bit nicer. So we're gonna flip this. Make sure you point out that corner as best as you can. And then we're just going to press that seam. If you're using vinyl for the exterior or whatever, um, something you can't iron, then you can iron it from the back side. Or you can warm up your ironing board and go from there. Yeah. There we go. So in the pattern, it has you only sew along the top edge, that slanted edge, um, and then you sew it to your bag along the straight edge in the center. But I'm thinking I want to, I think I'm gonna top stitch it an eighth of an inch along all the edges just to give it a cleaner look. And then when I sew the pocket into place, I'll use like a quarter inch seam allowance. I just like the idea of basting all the way around that pocket and then attaching it to the front. You can see how cool that looks. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Such a fun front pocket. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna top stitch eighth of an inch along all the edges. I mean, you can leave the side ones open if you want. Oh yeah, that looks nice. And definitely make sure that you are taking care to mirror these pieces or it's not gonna look great. I don't need another backpack for myself, but it's gonna look gorgeous. So it's gonna be hard to resist. Okay. So I do not have my foam adhered yet. I don't prefer to do that. Okay, so I am lining these up. along all the edges. And I'm taking care to line up where the pockets meet. As you can see there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around the edge to base in place and then I'm going to come up and back stitch and pull my threads to the back. Yeah. Yeah. And I am using Lux vinyl from my website. Um, it's a printed Lux vinyl which isn't yet available. I'm just testing it and then a pearlescent Lux vinyl, which isn't available yet either. Um, so these have a microfiber backing, which has a bit of a grip on a surface. So just keep that in mind as you're going. And I think I'm gonna actually baste around the whole thing first. so that everything stays in place. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna sew those pockets down. Yeah, this is way better, because then I can match up my seams a little bit better.
So there is what that looks like. And then I'm gonna pull those threads to the back. And then you can tie them off, use glue, whatever you would like to do. Okay. And so now what I'm gonna do is just trim these pieces to match the front panel. So there's just a little bit extra. I think my seam allowance was maybe just a little bit too small, but I am not worried about that. Because there is another section of this pattern that's like, if it's off, just trim it. And I absolutely love that mentality. Makes things really easy and beginner friendly. Because it's like, guess what? It happens. Just trim it. It'll all be fine. Okay. So now I'm going to base my foam in place. Um, if you are following the pattern instructions, your foam should actually be about half an inch or so smaller along all the sides. If you're cutting it based on the pattern piece, I know my machine can handle binding through that foam, so I did not worry about it. Um, but if you are going to, and you know you're gonna make this pattern more than once, I would suggest printing out those pattern pieces a second time to create a foam template piece, basically, a foam pattern piece. All right. So there is my foam basted into place. And then I'm gonna add my nameplate. Wow. So pretty. I love these slip pockets. They're so, like, they're big and useful, but also create just this pizzazz. I love it. All right, um, my front panel is fully constructed. I am moving on to the front. No, the back. Good job. I'm gonna start with my grab handle really quick. So I have two pieces of vinyl that are two different lengths. Nope, widths. We'll get there, no worries, we'll get there. First tutorial in a while. So I am laying a piece of tape down the center of each piece. And I'm gonna fold these in half towards the center, making sure that my edges of the vinyl are butting up next to each other. Since this isn't a handle piece that I'm folding in half, I don't mind those pieces touching nearly completely. But when you're creating a strap that folds over and you've got them right next to each other, there isn't any room for them to fold. So if you notice I leave a gap, it's so that there's room for it to fold. Hopefully that helps. And then I'm gonna grab another piece of double-sided tape to um, sandwich these pieces together. I don't want anything shifting. So I've got a quarter inch wide in between there. And then I'm just gonna lay these on top of each other so that they're offset from the edge by a little bit. So, I mean, I probably should have flipped this so that you saw more of the scissor print, but as a grab handle, You'll see both, not worried about it. So then I'm gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch from the smaller part of the strap. And since the raw ends are gonna be enclosed with our overlay, I'm not worried about top stitching those. And now if you want to add a second row of stitching in from there or something, you totally can, but that is what that looks like. 
Just gonna trim these so that they're even. And get all my extra threads. Okay, goodbye. All right, so here is where I am going a little bit rogue from the pattern with my straps. So I have a piece of webbing cut to about 20 inches, and then I've got this triangle connector. Actually cut this triangle connector out of some scraps, so it's not the perfect size, but it'll work. So I've got my webbing within the seam allowance by about an inch so that I have plenty within the pattern or within the seam allowance to help this backpack last a long time. And then I'm just top stitching along those edges. Um, again, if you have the Mercury backpack, I would recommend the way she has you do the connectors in that pattern. It's really well explained well thought out. I love it. <clears throat> so I'm trimming at an angle there. Don't trim off your extra webbing because that's defeating the purpose of why we left the trail in there. But yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to turn this through and top stitch it. <clears throat> so I'm pulling on the webbing just ever so slightly and I'm pressing to get my seams to lay nice and flat. And then if you wanted to, you could add a second line of stitching to stabilize that webbing but I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So I will continue with that on this side. God, I love this vinyl. Okay. gonna trim away my extra little ears here and again these triangles are a little oblong so I definitely have to be careful about how I lay them on the back panel but for now I can set these aside <clears throat> and I'm gonna work on the straps, the backpack straps. So these have a curved edge. It just it looks really pretty. I love the extra little foam in there. I think it's a nice touch. And we want to go two inches up. We're going to measure two inches up from the bottom and make a little mark. We're gonna sew around the foam at that mark. So I'm gonna trim this down. that on the other side. And now I'm going to 
to measure one inch in from the outer edges. So I'm just laying my long ruler here, making a nice long line. I will be covering the foam with that one inch mark. And you want to do this on all the sides. Um, if you trust yourself enough to turn the strap through, you can absolutely just sew around all that shape, around that whole shape, um, and then flip it through. But like with thicker vinyls, that might not be the quickest option. Um, you could also try the backpack strap method. I think it's from Sew Yours, um, where it's, a f it's finished with binding. I just, I love this method. I love how soft it feels. I love being able to use the locking connectors. I think they really add a lot to the bag. And this definitely goes faster when you've done it before, which is why I'm like speeding through it. But the first time I did it, I was like, okay, wait, okay, wait, okay, wait. <laughs> and then you do what? All right. So then I'm laying double-sided tape to the left and right of that one inch mark. So within Closest to the edge, no, how would I describe that? On the outside edges of that one inch line. So my one inch line is here and here, and it's on the opposite side of the line so that we can fold those edges in. your tape is nicely pressed. Peel back. Um, I did fuse my foam to the vinyl. Super easy to fuse the foam. All you do is add a little bit of water on your heat press. If you have a steam press then you would just use the steam. So there's that edge being folded in. Sometimes these Lux vinyls with that backing, they don't want to stay folded on the tape. So you just have to work kind of quick. Um, I'm hoping if I get a seam roller, it'll hold better. But you can always add hair clips in the meantime. So we're gonna flip that over Peel off the tape here and just repeat that on this side. Oh my gosh, this printed vinyl. <sighs> um, I posted in my Instagram stories recently that this printed vinyl, the one downside is that um, little white dots can appear on the print well f from the process of it printing because the backing has a bit of fluff to it so it might transfer while printing onto the right side as it's unrolling etc um, so you can kind of see like right there it's where the ink didn't get to touch the fabric because of the fuzz so one downside but it's just it feels so nice that I think it's worth it I'll just be really mindful when I'm designing prints for this and of course disclose that and we won't sell any that are like actually absolutely covered 
in dots, you know what I mean? We wouldn't do that. Okay, so I'm pressing out that curve, but you won't necessarily see all of that once we add the locking slide adjuster, so I'm not super worried about it. And you're gonna press these together. We're just gonna sew around that outer edge. If you wanna add two rows of stitching, you absolutely can, but these are so incredibly soft. So like I said, I'm gonna do one on camera and then I'll do one time-lapsed. So first, I'm following along just an eighth of an inch from the outer edge. I don't think I'm gonna add a second row of stitching to this one. I feel like it might be a little distracting with the stripe print. So I've got a webbing piece that's cut to about five inches and I'm going to lay a piece of double-sided tape. I have this wrapped around the large center bar. I'm going to second guess myself again, but that feels accurate. Yeah. So I'm going to use a lighter. Just to prevent as much fraying as possible. I'm going to fold one edge up and then one edge down and over. Like that. To create this piece. And then I'll grab another piece of double-sided tape. going to center this over the strap. You want to make sure the buckle is hanging down like that and then I'm going to sew a box stitch around it. It's like what in the world? my hardware out of the way as much as possible but if you can't just make sure that you're protecting it okay and once I've got my box I'm gonna stitch an X I'm gonna go around the bottom again If you are using vinyl for this little connector piece, I would not recommend going over the bottom again because you could end up um, perforating the vinyl. So just be very mindful. But there is our box stitch. Looks very good from all sides. go ahead and work on the other one.
back to the regularly scheduled pattern. Okay, that was harder to say than it should have been. Alright, so I'm going to cut an eight and a half inch piece of zipper. Super excited about this back zippered pocket. I love a functional piece of bag. Okay, so I'm adding my zipper pull. Then we're gonna grab our zipper tabs. Set that piece aside. We're gonna do right sides together. And the zipper tab is wider than it needs to be and possibly a little bit longer. It's just so you have a little bit of wiggle room. Now, if you want to cut out a lining piece for this, you absolutely can. but it's not given in the pattern to do so. And then we're gonna fold these up and top stitch through the zipper tabs. That is our zipper ready to go. I'm gonna grab the bottom piece. I'm gonna lay these right sides together. Oh boy, I did not math that well. My zipper should have been a little bit longer, but that is okay. It's within the seam allowance, I'll make it work. Nine inch zipper. Double side tape do that, like forgets where it needs to be. It attaches to the wrong thing. It's annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna lay the double sided tape down. This will help me keep my zipper nice and straight. And it's totally up to you if you want your zipper to the left or the right. I want this in the direction I've got it going. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. It's fine. And then because I'm using double-sided tape, I don't need to baste my zipper into place. I can just go ahead and add my lining so long as right sides are together. And then I'm going to flip this over to sew so that my zipper pull is on the opposite end. So I don't have to worry about moving it for a while, which will help prevent any bunching on my zipper tape. So I'm getting close to my zipper pull so I can lift up unzip, make sure to massage those pieces back into place and continue sewing. And we've got that attached. I'm going to zip this back up and top stitch through the lining and the exterior. So if need be, you can definitely iron that. gonna roll it as I sew. Okay. And 
And then we're gonna attach the top portion of that panel. Make sure you're lining up the side edges. Should have taped that down, but it's already clipped, so whatever. I really need to do something about the fact that these zipper tabs are not right. <laughs> I'm like, I could have if I just recut my zipper. Here we go. The lining piece is intentionally wider as well. And I think that's really nice. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room as a beginner in case things aren't really lined up perfectly. back up, laying that in place. And then we're gonna fold the lining up. I'm gonna zip my zipper <clears throat> and pull on that as I'm top stitching. So I'm, I know that seam is nice and straight. And because those pieces are cut to the same size, they're going to be about half an inch or so off. So you just want to make sure you're trimming it or basting along the bottom edge that is shortest to close that off. I'm not going to trim anything away because all of that extra is doing is adding a little bit more structure to the back panel. So I'm going to clip those seams, clip those pattern pieces together to set aside. Um, and then before we move on, we want to make sure that our back panel is the size it needs to be. So we're going to align this to the front and lining pattern piece just to double check. So it looks like the pattern piece isn't too far off. Again, that is just adjusting for seam allowances for different machines, different zipper tapes. So I love how forgiving this pattern is so far. <laughs> Hopefully it can forgive the zipper tabs I cut <laughs> wrong. So we can cut away that excess lining. Okay. And then it's totally up to you if you want to baste the pocket pieces in place now or later. Um, I'm gonna wait and we will work on adding our handle and overlay. So for the overlay, we're gonna be folding the edges up by half an inch, up and down. So I'm just gonna add a piece of double-sided tape along each end and folding that down. So this is going to be overlaid on top of the straps and the grab handle. quarter inch wide double-sided tape so that when I lay this over top I'll cover the whole thing all right Ooh, look at that look at that look at it so for these straps I want to cut them a, an angle that mirrors the other side. And you 
want them to fan out when you're laying them down on your panel. All right, so I have measured two and a quarter down from the top and marked my center. And I'm going to grab the <laughs> grab handle. Actually, I think I'm just gonna use double-sided tape to hold all this in place. Oh, <laughs> that's not my grab handle. There's my grab handle. There is my handle. All right, so the grab handle, you're gonna lay as close to the center as possible. I think I'm gonna do just like a quarter of an inch out from the center so that it sits a little bit better, but that looks really nice. And then these, like I said, they go up and over. So you want them to angle out, like, yeah, like that. That was, that was great, that was flattering. I think I might bring these in to overlap by a little bit because they're they're a little wide. They're a bit much. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to baste this into place, which will help give it some security. And then we're going to lay that strap anchor piece over top. Got them basted, so now nobody will move. Centering it, making sure it lines up straight. And then we're just going to sew around all four sides. And the strap overlay is cut wider than it needs to be just to give you plenty of wiggle room. Very beginner friendly. And then I'm going to trim away the excess vinyl. add this last piece of the back and I want them to angle in. So I'm going to actually start these. Hmm. Okay, that makes absolutely no difference. You want them to be mirror images of each other, but I'm gonna start these where the, like just before the backpack starts to curve. Hopefully that's not too high up, making it kind of like sit weird on the body, but I'll stick that there. And then I'm gonna grab my foam and baste the foam all the way around and secure those side anchors.
and then we can finish off this piece here, which goes up over that slider and then down. So it's super easy to use. And then we'll finish off this raw edge. You can either use like a belt tip, like a clamp-on strap end, which I think I might do. I don't know if I have any rainbow here, but I can always grab one from HQ. Like that's a last minute fix. But with the texture on those pieces, it prevents that from moving. And then as long as there's no pressure, you can gently adjust that strap. And I probably will actually fold this over and stitch. Well, um, I don't know. I don't really want the clamp on strap ends because they can be a little bit sharp. And since this is gonna be like under your arm, etc., I would hate for it to kind of catch and hit you in a weird way. So with the front done, the exterior done, we can move on to the gusset. Um, and then we're in the home stretch. All right, for the top zipper, for the zipper gusset, I'm cutting a piece that is about 25 inches long. I don't want that to be too small. That would break my heart. And I've got my iron warming up because I want to make sure my zipper is nicely pressed. Okay, so here we go. It's a big old gusset. We have our side pockets. We're gonna sew along the top edges and the bottom edges, right sides together. I have, I'm gonna call it rough cut my lining pieces because when we flip it, it's not gonna matter. So I didn't cut those to the perfect size on the lining. So I've got the top edge sewn. I'm unclipping one to sew on the bottom. Unclipping the other to sew along the bottom. Then we're gonna flip it through, flip it, open it. I don't love my lining choice. I don't think it matches perfectly. I mean, it's a rainbow, so technically, technically all of the colors are there, but I don't know, it's kind of nice. It tonally matches, but it doesn't match, you know what I mean? So I did not trim down my seam allowances at any point. I just don't think I need to. And I'm going to roll that seam. Hopefully you can kind of see that action, rolling the seam. And I'm clipping along the top edge only. Um, kind of press the bottom, but we're only going to be top stitching that longer top side at the moment. So it's the only one I'm worried about. And then I do it to the bottom edge anyway. Okay, root. Right. Top stitching on the top edge. grab our exterior gusset and 
we are going to measure an inch and a half down from the top edge. So I've just got my ruler laid straight across the top there. I'm gonna lay the pocket so that that top edge is directly pressed against the ruler. And then I'm gonna clip it into place along the bottom. Making sure not to move anything. Slide that clip out. And then, I'd like to say I trust myself enough. Maybe I do. I don't. All right. So I'm going to sew across the bottom first. So once the bottom edge is in place, it's exactly where it should be. That's when I can run out of bobbin thread, actually. Ooh. So you're not gonna see my bobbin thread for a while. So I'm just gonna, I'm doing a bobbin dump. I've got a half empty bobbin and I don't care what color this is. So now I can bring the raw open edge of my pocket to match the side gusset. This is going to create a 3D pocket. So on the other side, what we'll do is bring that in. If you're using lighter weight fabrics, you might be able to do this all in one fell swoop. Um, I just don't trust the pocket to stay lined up while I'm moving around. <laughs> what was that about trusting it to stay lined up? My goodness, it shifted. I didn't catch through the side thread, the side gusset, so no worries. Clip that. We'll clip it this time. How about that? We'll just, there we go. And then we will repeat that pocket on the other side of the gusset. Now, if you really want to, you can use double sided tape to help you hold this in place. So I'm lining that up. Clipping at the bottom where it meets. And this is where you could like slide a little piece of double sided tape in at that bottom edge to help you hold it down.
and then I'm trimming the excess lining away. Okay. So that is our gusset with pockets. I'm going to set that aside. I'm also going to set aside my lining gusset piece because I'm not worried about that. And I'm going to set aside my lining zipper gusset pieces because I am focusing on the exterior. This piece, this step that I'm doing is completely optional. It's absolutely unnecessary, but like I said, I have this strip that was extra and I want to use it up. So I have measured, this is a, a one and a half inch wide piece. I've measured halfway, so 0.75, and I am adding a piece of double-sided tape to one of the sides. Yeah, so you can see it's got the selvage print here. That's the side I'm folding in. So tape applied, peel away the backing, and I'm going to fold up that raw edge to my marked line. <laughs> it's like just barely enough. That's okay though. a satisfying noise. Oh man, you can see it. Nobody will notice. It's rainbow, it's fine. Alright, so now this piece, I'm going to use some double sided tape again, is going to get placed as like a zipper overlay, but not really. Again, I'm just having some fun because I can. So if you were using a directional print, you would want to notate. Okay, so let me explain this as best I can. Imagine your zipper is going to be placed here. My folded over edge, not my raw edge, is going to be placed away from the zipper. So like that and like this because this is my folded over edge. So like if my print, dang it, <laughs> it would have lined up if I went the other way. But this way it's opposite. And honestly, I think that's better, but worse. No, that's worse. But I can't undo it, but I can undo it. And I'm gonna undo it. Cause it will be so unbelievably satisfying to have it work the way I planned for it to work. So I'm gonna undo it. And the reason you want one raw edge is so that your seam isn't super thick. So the raw edge is where your zipper is gonna get attached. So it does add some thickness if you're using a domestic machine. You definitely wanna be careful of that. Um, but the materials I've selected aren't insanely thick so we should be good oh man okay yeah so again we want to place it so that when they're lined up, they'll meet, they'll match. So I'm gonna lay this raw edge against raw edge and my finished edge 
is kind of like in the middle of this zipper piece now. And it's taped down in place. So my zipper is gonna go here. I need to tape this one down. So this is an extra step you really don't need, but I'm having fun. And I really just wanted to have like a ton of pops of this printed vinyl so that the like pearlescent holographic pink wasn't like bam in your face, you know? I mean, I don't mind that. All right, so now I need to top stitch along that folded edge. And if you wanted to add like piping to this piece, totally good. so satisfying what sucks is like once you add your zipper you're taking away so the print won't be seamless but it, it's gonna be cool it's gonna be really cool so I've got my zipper tape ready I've got two zipper pulls on it gotta have a double zipper pull I'm gonna add a little clip to one end and move my zipper pulls out of the way I like to cut my zipper tape long enough that I can move my zipper pulls completely off to one side so that they're not in the way at all while I'm sewing. So I'm gonna lay double-sided tape against the raw edge. I'm using eighth inch wide so that it's nowhere near my seam allowance. I'm gonna lay my zipper. I want about half an inch to three quarters of an inch within the seam allowance so that it is safe from unraveling. And there's that. And then I'm going to add my lining as well. And I'm going to double sided tape that piece because why not? And it's hot, so we're just going to have to listen to the air conditioning. I apologize. lining. Now the gusset is where things are going to change if you're doing a um, birthed bag versus a bound bag. So keep that in mind. I'm going to line up all the edges. Make sure everything's lined up nicely and we'll sew down that seam. All right, and here is where I'm going to change my bobbin. I don't trust it. I want this top stitch to look very nice. Oh, we would have made it, but it's okay. It's not that much thread. So it 
if you need to, you can iron the lining side so everything's nice, straight. And then we're gonna flip this over and top stitch. And again, because I have this um, vinyl overlay, it's adding even more thickness, so just keep that in mind as you're sewing, if you're adding this piece. And instead of worrying about everything sitting nicely all at once, I'm just kind of taking it section by section and situating everything. And you could even do this with a woven print. It doesn't have to be vinyl. If you want to add this little overlay, um, just make sure you interface it accordingly. Or yes, if you have a domestic machine, don't interface it accordingly so that it's not adding an insane amount of bulk to your project. Okay. We'll leave that. Look at that. But you see what I mean though? Like how overwhelming that could have been as the entire gusset. So now we have these fun little pops. Pop, pop. Okay. I'm going to add my lining side while I'm here looking at it. Oh, it's out. I got really confused. Dorothy got a hold of some double sided tape, so we're just going to work with what we have. <laughs> I can't use this, but I need to. I hate to throw it away. It's still perfectly good. It's just a mess. panel widths since my zipper tape is longer I can't really go based off of that to make sure that things are lined up properly now I can add two sided tape to the other side <laughs> okay, and so to make sure this gets laid in place as close as possible, I'm just going to pick a stripe. Of drag it forward, making sure my panels are also even. Okay, as good as it's going to get. Mm-hmm. That's nice. That's very nice. Okay. Bobbin. 
don't fail me now. <laughs> Anastasia, anyone? gives it such nice structure too. I'm really happy I did the Sofuse Plus instead of the foam. It gives it a nice structure without the puff. So I'm stoked about that. Um, now again, I know I already said it, but if you are adding your lining without binding, this is where the instructions are going to differ. All right, and now we're gonna be using a 3 8 inch seam allowance to attach the side panels. Make sure you bring your zipper pulls in. I'm gonna start with my exterior. I'm actually gonna baste it all into place first. And then when I add my lining, I'll use the proper seam allowance. So right sides together for your exteriors. Bring this up. together for your lining. And make sure your lining isn't twisted. And then we're going to follow that 3 8 inch seam allowance. possibly run out of bobbin, which we did. Oh, it was right at the end of that side though. Thank you. All right, so again, I can do a little bit of a bobbin dump because I'm gonna be basting for the most part after this. And anywhere I'm not basting, you're not gonna see my top stitch or my bobbin thread, I should say. <clears throat> because when I'm top stitching, what I like to do is only top stitch through the exterior fabric, not my lining. I find that if for any reason my lining isn't fitting well, um, I can always kind of adjust it so long as I haven't basted everything together. I like to use the hair clips because they have a really light hold 
um, I can brush them away as I'm sewing around all these edges. So I like to clip it along the center and then I'll roll it on either side to make sure things line up nicely. And this pocket is kind of getting in the way, so I'm just gonna clip it for a minute so it sits nice and flat. And so right here, because I did not top stitch through everything, if I need to, I can fold that up like by a little eighth of an inch or something. It's not gonna hurt anything if your lining is a little bit too big for any reason. seems to be fitting okay though. All right, so I'm gonna switch my stitch length to like a six. We want this to be pretty quick. I'm not worried about my fabrics lining up at my zipper panel because those are good. Okay, I'm just gonna go all the way around the edge. Make sure you're going through your exterior and your lining. This is another good chance to baste those pockets down into place. If your um, zipper top piece is a little uneven from your bottom gusset, you can kind of make your stitching meet up and just trim away the excess from that area. So I'm going to start along the bottom. And just make sure you're feeling through all of those layers as you go. Make sure you're moving your pocket out of your way, out of the way so it sits flat. Okay, this is basting. It's not gonna hurt anybody. Switch to this lighter pink. This will be good. And because this is basting, I'm just gonna trim my top thread instead of like pulling through to start at the same spot. back to where we started and I'll trim that away. You can unclip that side pocket and I am going to trim all of my excess away. Any extra threads, etc. This is where you want it to go away so that it isn't trapped within that binding. any extra lining or exterior that doesn't make your layer sit nicely, this is where you'll want to trim it away. So like right here, my gusset didn't quite line up with the exterior, but I can trim it away. And it creates a little bit of an angle, but not much. You're gonna disguise it with your seam allowance anyway. I tricked myself and I missed a little section up here. So I'll get that squared away.
So now we're ready to finish up our lining. We'll get this bad boy done. Oh, um, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and snip my centers. I'm gonna line up side pockets and the gusset piece. And flatten it out as best as I can. So that I know where those centers are. Starting with the slip pocket, this is not included. I'm going to fold over the top edge. This is waterproof canvas, so I don't need to worry about it fraying. And I've cut it with a rotary cutter. Oh, I do need to worry about my stitch length. Four and a half. Grab my one inch wide ruler and fold the slip pocket in half. Crease. Laying my ruler on one side of that crease. Pressing. Slide the ruler out. And we're gonna top stitch that. my lighter to help melt those threads and then I can still see my one inch crease I'll lay that down there we go pull that over Top stitching just like an eighth of an inch from the outer edge. Perfect. So now we have these cute little top stitched pleats. We're gonna grab one of our lining panels. And fold it in half. You could go ahead and mark out your centers now while you've got them, if you'd like. And now initially I was thinking I was going to lay them but I don't want this to have a raw edge along the bottom but it's a little late to fold it to not have a raw edge. So what do I do? I don't think it would hurt to have a raw edge along the bottom, so I'm just gonna leave it. But I wanna line up those center bits. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew a very thin little box. Little boxes. So I'm going like an eighth of an inch from one side of the center. Turning. I'm gonna make one little stitch out, out, go up, make an inch from the other side of the box, come to the top, back stitch, back stitch. I want that to be really secure and then we'll finish it off. And if it doesn't look super pretty, you're not really gonna see it.
I think I will switch my bobbin thread though because it's a different weight and it shows. So I'm gonna fold my folded pleats over the center line and baste around the outer edges. And I just added these where it felt right. There's no right or wrong. this piece wider knowing I would trim off the excess but I wanted to make sure it was plenty wide so that's the slip pocket took what five minutes to add if that super quick For the zipper pocket, I am using this overlay from Jolie Lee Creations. It says, you look really pretty today. Well, I should say I had it made to say you look really pretty today. You can get anything you want, within reason. So I'm going to add some double-sided tape to the back top edge and a little piece of tape on the bottom edge here. And we're gonna sew this in place first. I'm gonna find my centers. like with the size placard this is I've got two inches from either end so that's how I know it's centered <laughs> I love it oh yeah I need to switch that bottom thread way over there all right this purple will work just fine sells templates with little turning pivot points, which I thought was really cool. Oh my god, these are so cool. This is so fun. Now we want to get rid of the fabric under the zipper area and please make sure you're not cutting through 
your overlay or anything like that. So if you can, I mean, having sharp scissors is nice, but using a really dull pair of scissors lets you know you're not cutting through too many layers. Or you could get the like duckbill applique scissors for this maybe. So there's what that is looking like. Look at that. It's so fun. You look really pretty today. No, you look really pretty today. Stop it. Alright. So this is my preferred method for adding this kind of pocket. There's all different kinds of ways, but this is what I have found works best for me. I am going to baste, stay stitch my zipper tape to my lining pieces. I want to know that they're attached. There is a tape method for this, but I just don't fully trust it. <clears throat> so I'm putting my lining pieces right sides together, lining them up, and my zipper is face up. So it looks a little weird. So here's what we're looking at. There is a raw edge attached to the finished zipper tape edges. And now I'm gonna use my iron and press this open up and away from the zipper tape. But you want a nice folded edge if possible. So this works really well with like a lighter waterproof canvas or water resistant canvas. Um, this is the thicker stuff from wa uh, FWD fabrics. So it adds a bit of bulk, but it should be okay. So yeah, I'm gonna press this so it's as flat as possible. Yes, looking great. So more double-sided tape, more Jolly Rangers. Okay. Okay, so then we're going to lay this over top of all of that. And you want to make sure you've got plenty of room on either side for your lining. Everything is inside the box perfectly. My zipper pull is out of the way completely. So I'm going to start stitching around the small box. Now I can kind of feel that I'm not catching the lining, but that is okay because I've already sewn it into place. And your lining should be flayed open. And it's this way so that you don't have to start and stop and pull your threads and do it again and then move something else. Like it's just really the easiest method I have found. All right, so I'm leaving my needle in place. Just before I would pivot, I'm pushing my zipper pull in readjusting the zipper back into place moving it out of the way and then continuing on pivoting and then bring it back okay. so there's what it looks like from this side And 
then we can lay these flat. You can trim one of the pieces down. You want these to be the same size. And this isn't a birthed bag, so I don't need to worry about leaving any part of this open and unsewn. So I'm gonna start on one side, moving my lining and zipper placard out of the way. And just sew around all the sides. Except the top, you don't need to sew around the top because you can't get to it. And it's already sewn, it's already attached. You don't have to worry about it. a couple Pokemon. I'm ready to finish this. So I want my zippered pocket on the back of the bag and I'm going to have my slip pockets on the front of the bag. If you marked center snips on the front of the bag you can also do it or you can line those up with your center snips. Align your center snips. <laughs> so I'm going to baste along all of the edges. I'm going to use a stitch length of like six and a half. And again, I have a bobbin I don't super care about. Um, and this is kind of helpful as you're sewing the pieces together. You know which line is your basting for that. So excited to see this bag completed. I'm really excited about this pattern. I think it's a really nice back to school bag. Definitely very unisex with the shape of the pattern. Right, so I'm trimming away any excess lining, foam, etc., etc. So we've got a nice shape to follow. Oh my god. Oh, it's working. Where is it? Oh, come here, come here. I bought this thing to catch Pokemon. Did I get it? Did I get it? I got it. Okay, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Other side. It was like $25 off of um, Newegg. I thought it was like 50 on Amazon. I was like, oh no, it is not that serious. But I'll, I'll pay $25 to have some fun. <laughs> All right, center snips. I've got the zippered pocket on the back of the bag. Perfect, everything lines up very nicely. And again, I the, the zipper tabs not lining up was totally my fault. I did not cut my zipper tape to the correct size, but I can kind of fix it with my seam allowances. I don't think I'm gonna get as close as I'd like to, but if I add any more fabric, it's gonna create too much bulk and I can't, I can't have that. So, this is what it is. And you want to be really careful to keep your webbing out of the seam allowances as well. You don't want that to accidentally sneak in. Back to the beginning. So there's really not much for me to trim out of the way on this side, except for a little bit of the foam. And we are ready to attach our gusset. Now the gusset doesn't have a 
right or wrong since it's all even. It's even on all sides. So I've got my binding over there ready to go. I'm gonna start with the front and then I'll finish with the back. So what I like to do is attach the gusset to one side first and then attach my binding and then do the other side. So I'm gonna grab a clip. Um, I could also use double-sided tape to help me hold all of this together, but I think the curve is big enough that I'm not gonna have an issue. Now, there are um, a ton of different, oh my God, look at that, look at that. Um, little notches and lines to keep track of given on the pattern. So if you need to refer to those, Definitely make sure you mark them out. It's a really big curve, so I think it'll be very forgiving to any seam allowance issues you might have or things not quite lining up. I'm gonna give myself just a few little snips along the curve. just under the side pocket so that things sit nicely. <clears throat> My side pocket over here is extending past the seam allowance and I do not want that. I should say it's extending past the side gusset. I did cut my foam to be out of the seam allowances on the gusset. I'm glad I did, because I obviously didn't do it on the back and front panels. So that'll help me, that'll help with the amount of bulk. I have the bottom half clipped into place and I just wanna kind of open this up and make sure that everything is looking good and even as far as how it's aligned. And now I can focus on clipping the top curve into place. And again, if you need to, you can add just a few little relief snips. Oh God, that is terrifying. <laughs> Pokemon. I'm wondering how long I'll be into playing Pokemon Go. When it first came out, I was like, I'm too busy for this. And now I'm like, I mean, I am too busy for this, but I'd love to ignore everything and play this. So that's kind of where I am at in life. All right. So adding those little snips kind of creates this bendable spine that just kind of sits right where it should. So nice. All right, let's go. I'm gonna unzip my zipper just so this is a little bit easier to And you don't want to increase your seam allowance by any crazy amount because we do have a one inch wide piece of binding we're gonna use to cover. So if I go any further in, I'm not really covering everything. I won't be able to cover everything with the binding unless I trim it down. So I'm smushing my gusset as I'm sewing around the curve.
trimming away all of your extra threads. And now if you need to, dang, I've never done that. Um, I caught some extra lining there. We're gonna check this seam. I'm gonna make sure that none of our basting stitches are showing. Looks good. And now I'm going to trim down where the edges aren't really lining up. So I've got a little bit extra of my exterior popping through. You do not want to trim this down a lot. You don't want like an eighth inch wide seam allowance to cover with binding because then you, you've got nothing you're covering, your binding gets too big, your seam allowance is then very heavily skewed. We don't want that. But we do want a fairly even seam allowance to cover. So I'm just kind of trimming all that down. Just really double check. You can't see those basting stitches. I think we're good. Even on your side gusset too. All right, we're good. So now I'm gonna add the binding. And for that, I'm gonna add double-sided tape. I like to do the Lynn's Handmade Taper on the end. Hopefully this is enough. I always just take the time to cut a bunch of binding um, one inch wide by the width of the fabric. I think it ran away. double-sided tape. Okay. And then we're gonna just envelop the edge with the binding. And you wanna cover it about 50-50 as best as you can. And I am gonna clip as I go as well, but that double-sided tape just helps grip as we start sewing and removing the clips, especially around the curves where things kind of shift on you. struggling right now. I I don't want to sell this backpack. Maybe I'll use it as a work. <laughs> I made a Kaya Papaya as a work bag. You can't keep all of them, Lauren. This is your job. I can't help it. They're so pretty. So the next side, I'm just going to time lapse. You don't need to see me finish both sides perfectly. <laughs> Imperfectly, no doubt. So 
So yeah, having that double-sided tape to hold the binding in place just makes it go quicker. It's less mental energy you're wasting to ensure that all the layers are lining up perfectly and that nothing is slipping. It's just wunderbar. It's wunderbar. Okay. Fold over that raw edge and clip. Yas. All right, then get out of the way. Okay, mm, that's not gonna work either. Would you like to get into my hoodie? No, anytime that Pokeball thing goes off, he's gonna freak out. All right, here. Come here, Spot. Go on. Go on. Thank you. Thank you. all the layers down together, what have you. Hmm. I bet I could use this. My... here anyway. We can check we didn't miss a spot and I don't want to miss a thing. All right, it's on the other side. This bag matches my hair. Done. Look at this bag. It, I just smacked myself in the face. <sighs> it's sturdy. <laughs> All right, we're going to flip this through. I'm 99% sure that I caught the zip tabs that I messed up. So I'm excited for that. It's actually a fairly lightweight backpack, too. I mean, pretty much the only interfacing we used was the phone. Ow. Oh yeah, I still have to finish those edges on the webbing. Not a problem. Oh my goodness. Oops, sorry Ben. A little bit of my basting here at this pocket area, 
but really not bad. Just my basting stitch. It's like in the seam, if anything, so I'm not super worried about that. But you can see I got it there. And I did sew over that seam again, just so I made sure I got it, but we solved that problem. You really want to push the binding into those corners as much as possible to help with the shape of your bag and making those curves look as good as they can. I mean, curve looks good. Your curves look good to me. Wait. Oh. Get out of here. You can't even see it. Oh, I forgot about the gusset. Ah, oh, I should have thought about that. That bright yellow is right in front. Not ideal. Wow, oh my gosh. I love those pockets on the front. And then this back zippered pocket is really, it's just so easy, which is what I love about it. Like it's, it's easy to do. Okay. Sorry, Ben. Let's go ahead and finish this area off. Something I did on one recently actually was I just kind of folded it over and folded it over and I added a rivet. If you have smaller rivets or larger webbing, you might even be able to get away with adding two, but you could also glue it and then add one rivet or something. But I definitely want to fold it over twice. This is a thicker webbing. It's not like seatbelt webbing, so it can tend to fray a little bit more. I had an idea. I had these leftover pieces of vinyl on my cutting table. So, I'm going to attach these to the ends of my webbing. So I'm just going to take this double-sided tape. This is somewhat inspired by Wins Handmade. Um, I mean, not somewhat. It's kind of fully inspired. She posted a video recently about finishing the ends of webbing with vinyl, but also it was just sitting there, so I'm like, yeah. So I cut this to one inch wide, I'm going to fold it over, center it as much as I can, oh yeah, this was a great choice, yeah, yeah, I'm going to mark the center first though, it gives it like a little pop of color, makes it secure. I'm going to sew this into place, but again, you could also sew it and rivet it if you wanted a little extra something, something. All right, I'm sew this down. I'm going to add my bobbin to be the matching thread though. There's just enough on that bottom. Okay. Probably should do this first next time so that I'm not fighting a whole bag. <laughs> a full box stitch if you wanted to or just do I'm just gonna do a little crisscrossy action and I'm probably gonna keep this backpack I, I love it um, 
so much. That's nice. That's 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 real nice. And like it adds a very light amount of weight to it so that it's gonna hang nicely too. So yeah, it was a good call. Thank you, Lindsay. As always for inspiring the bag making community. Now we are officially done with this bag. Fortuna backpack. Look at her, you are so cute. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you'll be picking up this pattern, it's awesome. I had so much fun making this. I love the end result. It's not too complicated. I think if you are an adventurous beginner, you could definitely handle it. I'm really happy I added the padded backpack straps again that is from another incredible designer another incredible pattern so I hope you check it out and I will see you all later bye